I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. Square root of 906.01 equals 30.1. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to yet another episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty, and this is a 100% playthrough right here on Missile Died Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Mass Effect 2 video. Uh, the last episode was crazy. We did everything that we possibly could do uh, before getting the Reaper IFF, and also we didn't do a side quest or a DLC because of the point is everything that we're going to do, we pretty much did. We have one stop and then my friends we are getting the reaper iff finally and catapulting ourselves towards the end of mass effect 2 a huge shout out to those of you watching uh the premieres of these videos right here on youtube and even bigger shout out to those of you supporting the channel over on patreon.com slash missile online without you guys there would be no videos at all so thank you don't forget to leave a like and a comment on these videos and it really does help uh project us into algorithms and stuff and hopefully hopefully if this video gets 50 likes, we'll start Mass Effect 3. I hope we can get there. Anyways, if we look at our journal, we will see that all we have is the N7 archaeological dig site. We're going to save these uh, side quests for after we have completed the, the, the final mission, the final story mission besides Arrival, uh, which I, I consider the end of Mass Effect 2's actually Arrival and not the main story mission that we have, Stop the Collectors. Uh, we also have Tally's loyalty mission and another character that we haven't received yet. We'll also have a loyalty mission, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. In fact, the first thing that we're going to do, my friends, is we are actually going to head back to the Shadow Broker base. It has been quite a while since we've gone there, but because of the uh, inevitability of these missions that are arriving, we want to go say goodbye to our love, Liara, and we also want to retrain our entire party so that they have abilities that are uh, their best, if you will. So, we're going to head to the Shadow Broker base. Feels like it's been a while since we've been here, but we do want to check in with Liara. Grab all of the retraining that we can do, which is going to be the first thing that we're going to do. We're going to head over to advanced training and retrain everybody. Before talking to Liara, I would try to see if you can turn off the music. It seems to be a little bugged. It will actually play through the next scene, and you do not want that to happen, my friends. Donnell Udina, Omega. Udina? Bro! You drank a lot there, buddy. Armando Bailey, Citadel. And perhaps my favorite, just in case we missed it. <laughs> I would also recommend using, like I said, the advanced training to reset anybody's skills that need to be reset. It will cost you a thousand element zero every time, but you should have plenty of element zero for this. Some of the big ones that I would recommend is making sure that Thane has no shredder ammo whatsoever. I just don't think it's useful. It's probably the worst ammo power in the entire game, when, especially if you're playing on Insanity, because everything has shields. The most useful of those is actually of the, of the powers is actually going to be Jack with her warp ammo, which I would recommend maxing that out so that you have that for the squad. And I would also uh, recommend Zaid's disruptor ammo, which is also very 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 powerful for overload on any character i would recommend area overload especially if you have all of the upgrades that we have because at this point in the game with those upgrades we're already stripping all of the armor or the shields i should say off of enemies regardless if it's an area overload or if it's an, uh, a heavy overload something else i want to point out is the survey information here i highly highly do not recommend buying these and the reason for that is if you're anything like me you've probably already scanned most of the planets and these are actually just going to put labels on your galaxy map that says uh, over certain clusters and stuff, it'll actually say Iridium Rich Planet and they don't go away and it's terrible. It adds so much. Just don't, don't bother buying these. Please don't. I know for completion's sake, do not buy them. They do nothing except make it look like there's something there when there isn't. Don't buy those. And finally, let's go ahead and talk to Liara. And finally, 
invite her up to our captain's cabin. Would you like to head up to the Normandy for that drink? That sounds wonderful. I'll get my things. Did you enjoy the tour? Yes, it's a beautiful ship, and I ran into Joker. He seemed happy to see me. Although he did ask if you and I would be acting out scenes from some vid called Vanya. Of course he did. I also spoke with Dr. Chakwas. I'm glad she's doing well. I brought you something. It took some digging, but I recovered your tags. never see these again. You can't get back everything you lose, but sometimes you get lucky. Yeah, that was the plan. Smooth, Shepard. How are you actually doing, Shepard? I mean, really. Not what you tell your squad to keep morale up. I'm okay. Really. It's been rough, but we'll get it done. You've certainly made a good start, even if those idiots on the Council won't admit it. There wouldn't be a man, woman, or child left on Horizon, if not for you. I saved some of them. Not enough. And the Collectors will keep hitting colonies until I stop them. So you'll stop them. And here I thought it'd be difficult. You'll get the job done. You always do. I just don't know what comes next. So tell me what you want. If this all ends tomorrow, what happens to us? And we get an option. Do we solidify our relationship or end it? I don't know. Marriage, old age, and a lot of little blue children. You just say these things. Goddess, you were dead. I got better. this time, but you're going to leave again. When your team is ready, you'll leap through the Omega-4 relay. I spent two years mourning you. So if we're going to try this, I need to know you're always coming back. I don't know. That's a pretty big promise to make. Oh, is it? I'd have to have something special to come back to. I'm open to suggestions. How about this? Now, my friends, we are ready for the Reaper IFF. Finally, now that we have invited Liara to our room, we've discussed what is what the 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 the, the, the fact that we're probably going to die. Uh, now, finally, we can tackle the Re Reaper IFF. And something that I want to say is this is the countdown to the end. If you do not, if you do the Reaper IFF and you do not finish the game in a certain amount of time, if you go and do missions in between and all of this other stuff, people will die. You will lose people. It will not be a 100% run. So that's why we are doing this in a very specific order. And now, finally, we can go ahead and get the Reaper IFF.
which is also a fantastic mission here in the Hawking Ada system. I also want to point out that we will get, finally, our final squad mate. It takes a long time to get this character, and this is why we're actually saving those N7 missions so that we can do this. I also want to mention that we are going to head to the Thorn system here, which we have not actually been to yet. So we're going to go ahead, and obviously when we get here, we're going to scan everything. The planet Leth really only has platinum and palladium and iridium, no element zero whatsoever. And the gas giant of Nemosin doesn't have anything either. Which means we are landing on a derelict reaper. If we want to check our journal, it's been a quite a while since we've been over here. The collector ship that we were on before yielded two key pieces of information. The one that was a trap, if you remember. First, the collectors are actually the ancient Protheans, indoctrinated and mutated into servants of the Reapers. Second, the Omega-4 relay leads to the Galactic Core where the Collectors are from, apparently? The intense gravitational fields of the Galactic Core make any jump through the Omega-4 relay a death sentence unless a Reaper identify friend or foe, an IFF device, can be found to give the Normandy a chance to navigate those fields safely. So that is exactly what we are going to do. We boarded and investigated that derelict Collector vessel that was a setup from Cerberus that we knew was a trap, uh, but they did it anyways. And now we are going to this area to recover a Reaper IFF from a deactivated Reaper. Now, somehow this Reaper was defeated a very, very long time ago, and because these things are so sophisticated and so technologically advanced, even though this Reaper is dead, it has somehow still maintained a mass effect field that has actually kept it from falling into the star that's here. Massive holes have been blasted and melted into parts of its hole, and it remains unrepaired. Cerberus is here. They've been investigating this thing. Uh, and at this point, we are going to head here ourselves and see if we can find this Reaper IFF. It's believed that 30, 37 million years ago, an unknown spacefaring race fired a mass accelerator round of incredible speed and power at the Reaper, which hit and disabled it. The round continued moving, eventually imp impacting the planet Clindagon, which we've heard about now in Mass Effect 1 and 2, creating the Great Rift Valley that is found there. This Reaper's death was likely the, that unknown race from 37 million years ago, their last act of defiance before their imposed extinction or indoctrination. And with that, it is finally time to board this derelict Reaper that was destroyed 37 million years ago. Cerberus has been studying it. We'll check in with the science team here and grab the Reaper IFF. I'm assuming that this should be a very simple, straightforward mission. Right? And for this mission, we're going to want to bring, well, <laughs> if you wanted this mission to be easy, you would bring Grunt and Jack and just make it a... Just a very, very easy time for you, or Grunt and Morden with his heavy incinerate. Uh, but if you're me, and you want some really cool dialogue and some story stuff, you're going to end up bringing Tally and Samara. And I don't necessarily recommend that squad. I think you're going to have a much better chance with basically anybody else. But in this case, we're going to bring Tally. We're going to bring Samara. They are going to just have a little bit of dialogue. That's actually kind of interesting. And I think it's almost necessary that you bring Tally. This is their build that they're currently using. Not very good for the type of mission that we're going to be dealing with. Although Heavy Reeve is actually fairly useful. It does double damage to armor and barriers, which is useful for all of the Scions, spoiler alert, that we're about to be facing in this mission because there's a lot of them. As for weapon loadout, we're actually going to be switching to the Eviscerator shotgun, which I think is going to be a little bit better. The Scimitar could also work fairly well, um, but I don't think the, Gla the Geth Plasma shotgun really works that well for this mission. It just takes a little too long to fire. We're going to go ahead and also switch to the grenade launcher. You can do this mission with the cane and it actually makes the very end of this mission go by incredibly fast and you're done with it. However, the grenade launcher is going to make this entire mission so much simpler by using that. So we are gonna take the grenade launcher. We are gonna use it a lot. I highly recommend using it. I um, have actually had to re-record this this part a lot because there's some bugs that are actually in this game uh, with the way charge and melee works and it ends up getting your character stuck constantly especially on this mission uh, with all of the husks and scions that we're facing 
So I did do it with the cane. The grenade launcher is just going to be way, way easier. Uh, and then we're also going to switch Samara, making sure she has the Matic as well uh, with the Locust. And then Tally is going to switch off of the, uh, she's going to be using the Eviscerator shotgun as well. And just like that, let's go ahead and let's board this derelict Reaper, this dead Reaper. I'm so excited. Chop, Joker. Doing my best. The wind's gusting to 500 kph. But there's a second ship alongside the Reaper. It's not transmitting any IFF, but the radar paints its silhouette as gap. I guess we know why the science team stopped reporting in. What just happened? The Reaper's mass effect fields are still active. We just passed inside their envelope. Eye of the hurricane, huh? I love how immediately they assume that the Cerberus science team that was here studying this derelict Reaper was taken out by this Geth ship that apparently is here. I think we're about to find out that there's a little more to this story than what they think. But anyways, let's proceed forward. And as we approach this body, Samara will have something to tell us. This does not look like the work of Geth. No, it does not. I don't think Geth torch their enemies. Anyways, we'll proceed down here and we'll find some wall safes that we can use. We can access this terminal for 2,000 credits. This wall safe for another 2,000 credits. And over here, we have a, yet another wall safe that we can bypass for 2,000 credits. And right next to that is actually a work log. We can find out a little bit more about potentially what happened to the Cerberus science team. Because they're going to tell us r right from their own mouths. So let's check with the head doctor here. Dr. Chana. -na 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 -na. The airlock has been installed at the far end of the hold section. We have begun pressurization for shirt sleeves work. The crew is edgy. I reassure them it is mere nerves, a superstitious reaction to what this hold represents. The corpse of a vast ancient life form. And, suspiciously enough, we get the Reaper's Indoctrination Codex. Kind of hinting at potentially what happened to these people, even though this Reaper has been long destroyed. Apparently, some of its effects might still be active. We can grab these med stations here for 200 credits and yet another work log to see what else was happening. Classic sign of indoctrination, as we know from Mass Effect 1, that's exactly what happened to Saren. Normandy to shore party. What just happened? The Reaper put up kinetic barriers. I don't think we can get through from our side. As curious as I am about the Reapers, I'd rather not be trapped inside one. Uh, Tally, I'm with you there, girl. We'll have to take down the barrier generators from in here. Any idea where they are? At the moment of activation. I detected a heat spike in what is likely the Rex Mass Effect core, sending the coordinates now. Be advised, this core is also maintaining the Reaper's altitude. So when we take the barriers down to escape, the wreck falls into the planet core. And that means everyone dies. Yeah, I got it. If any helmsman can pull us off this thing before it reaches crush depth, it's you. We'll make a sweep for survivors and recover what data we can. Stand by. Aye, aye. Good hunting. Good hunting indeed. We'll have a few more work logs, and also Samara and Tally might have something to say as we come in here. I wonder if the data they recovered was worth all these lives. You know, I gotta be honest with you, yes is the answer. This is where a Reaper IFF is, and this will allow us to go into the galactic core. Something no one has ever been able to do and survive, potentially putting an end to the collector threat and the Reaper threat. Steps. 
place affected their minds yeah it did and someone should probably tell Katie that uh, I think her husband's dead both of her husbands I don't really know anyways we want to make sure that we have incendiary ammo on everything before we proceed down here you'll see these explosive containers something to note about these and I think I've mentioned this before in this series if you overload those, they will explode doing way more damage and way larger explosions. So keep that in mind. Also, I just want to point out that we have nine, 19 grenades that we will be firing at people. And trust me, we will be firing. But as we proceed down here, we are going to start encountering some of the enemies that we will encounter uh, a lot of in this episode. And that, my friends, is Huss and Abominations by the buttload. There are so many of them in here it's not even funny so we're also going to go ahead and map these reeves and drones because those are actually going to be fairly useful as we proceed through this we're going to try to take these out there is so much ammo around here by the way so odds are you will never run out of that so keep that in mind we're going to spread our inferno ammo to as many enemies or on as many enemies as possible using that exploding crate to finish them off but those aren't the last ones we're going to be dealing with. to make husks came from the Geth or Sovereign. Geth origin never made sense to me. This confirms it's from the Reapers. Interesting. And actually, they're going to uh, add on to that in just a little bit, which is why I like bringing Tally and Samara. Samara able to add a little bit of that age-old wisdom. As we come down here, more enemies are going to approach, including an abomination. And more Huss, which, again, we can take these out. Now, if they clustered, you could switch very quickly to the uh, the grenade launcher. Let's go ahead and just finish that guy. I don't know what he was doing. Uh, and we're going to pop this, exploding that, sending him flying, and taking out these. Spreading that Inferno ammo as we go. Trying to make sure that they don't take down Samara. We don't want that. Go ahead and hopefully... Unfortunately, this... Uh, uh, okay, there we go. That did no thank you for that reef. And we'll keep proceeding down here. And there's an, yet yeah, another oh, abomination. So many enemies. And guys, this is nothing compared to what we are about to face. Like this is this is the easy part of the mission. Let's go ahead and switch back to the eviscerator shotgun and hopefully be able to take out some of these. So much better than the Geth plasma shotgun. I wish it wasn't, but unfortunately. The Geth Plasma Shotgun just doesn't do what it needs to do here. Look at how many enemies actually approaching. Abomination was able to get to us and explode, but because of our shield strength, we were able to deal with that no problem, using that explosive crate to finish that one off. And now we can listen in on this yet another work log, finding out a little bit more about what happened here. How terrifying is that? Imagine being on board a ship that you know is capable of all of these things. Ooh, even if it's dead. Anyways, as we proceed up here. Interesting, something killed those. We should, but as we proceed over here, we'll see slightly on the catwalk there, a silhouette of some kind. Potentially that was the sniper that took down those two husks. And as we proceed a little bit closer, we'll actually see it start to walk away. And we can tell, undeniably, that that is a geth. Very strange. Anyways, we want to come back here where we can... We're actually going to leave these power cells for now. The 100 credits just isn't worth it in this mission. We'll grab this refined platinum, save the power cells. We're going to need them. Uh, grab this terminal access, 3,500 credits, and this. this Cerberus sniper rifle damage uh, thing that we can grab there as well. Now, we're actually going to be dealing with 
a ton of enemies and we want to make this as simple for ourselves as possible. So we're going to put Samara and Tally, whoever's in your party, up here. We're going to slowly come down these stairs. We just want to go to the bottom so that we can get these enemies to start uh, spawning for us. These are only, right now, going to spawn from right here, allowing us to take them out a little bit easier. And we can take them out. We don't have to worry about too much. If you proceed too much further into this room, you are going to start spawning so many husks and a scion. It's not even fun. It's wild how many are going to start coming at us. So we're just going to start taking these out. Now, you could skip this entire section if you wanted to. But you would lose out on a research and uh, dialogue and a, and a few other things. So I wouldn't recommend that. But if you were in a rush, you could head that way. There's a door there that you can bypass. If you can bypass it before they hit you, then you move on to the next area. So it looks like we dealt with all of the husks that were here. But we're going to go ahead and put them back up here. Because they weren't listening and they ended up coming down. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to keep this what we have for now. Hopefully they're up there. Perfect. We're going to proceed forward just a little bit, and you'll see, you'll actually hear them start coming. Now, we have the Hus here, but we also have a Scion that we're going to put a ton of damage into as quickly as we can, dealing with all of these. And the reason why the Grenade Launcher is so good, I'm going to show you right now. It takes out so many Hus all at once. So you kind of wait for them to group up, and then as they do, you'll see just the amount of damage that the that the uh, grenade launcher can can actually dish out so we'll go ahead and we'll take out this one switch back to the grenade launcher unfortunately taking a little too long to do that but we're going to go ahead and hopefully group them all up taking out all of them that were there go ahead and charge this one hopefully our friends can take out the other ones that were there hitting those breaking those we don't need to worry about let's go ahead and just finish that off we're not going to use the grenade launcher against the scion itself there's just no need for that we're going to go ahead and charge those so that its shockwave doesn't hit us switching back to the eviscerator shotgun and we're also going to keep doing this charge it and wait for unfortunately tally and samara went down probably to uh one of the the husk i guess Go ahead and charge this stop it from doing that and now we're going to switch yet again to the grenade launcher take some time to get out and then again we can pop that and that will go ahead and take out all of the husks that were there as well as that abomination that was starting to run this section is so much easier with that assault with that um that grenade launcher my friends it's not even literally no contest uh so we'll go ahead and we'll refill all of our ammo and get these power cells for three additional ammo so right now we have 16 so we really only used th three technically we'll actually find more power cells later on so there's plenty of heavy ammo that we'll be able to use for this i just i'm not even joking it is so much easier my friends using using the uh the grenade launcher over the cane trust me let's go ahead and let's listen to this work log We can also come over here and grab a med kit for 100 credits, and we can grab this for one more research. Not the last that we'll actually find in this mission, by the way. Just like that, we get our, if Is I'm not mistaken, ready? our final heavy skin weave. And finally, the reason why we brought Tally and Samara here for this dialogue. We've seen these before, Shepard. Dragon's teeth, your people call them. The Geth used them on Eden Prime. I have heard of them being dug up on worlds that are far older than the Geth. I believe they are Reaper artifacts. See how the room's arranged? They treated this thing like some kind of altar. That doesn't seem right. 
No one in their right mind would want this. You heard the logs? They were seeing things, hearing things. They were being indoctrinated. We can't help these people now, but we won't let the machines use their corpses like this. That is most considerate. This whole place is coming down. Anyways, that, my friends, is the first time, I think, besides the little conversation that happened out there, that confirms Dragon Teeth are Reaper technology and not something developed by the Geth, which is actually the first time. I mean, we saw them in Mass Effect 1 being used extensively by the Geth, but nope, Reaper technology. So this is the door I was telling. Thought I just saw a shot go by. That was weird. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and bypass this door. I'm gonna have to look at that because that, that looked to me like a shot went by the, the thing and that's not supposed to happen. And we'll be treated with a very cool cutscene as we proceed down and into this airlock into the next section of this dead god, this sleeping god. I love it. heard of a geth speaking to organics it shouldn't be able to talk a single geth has no more intelligence than a baron well that one was able to know exactly who we are and was helping us oh damn if you've never played this game you're in for a treat my friends so as we proceed another step forward we have to deal with ha you guessed it husk husk after husk after husk after husk after husk after husk so we'll take down all of the ones that spawn here. Luckily, this is a fairly easy section of it because not many will spawn. And also they all kind of spawn from the same spots. So it's easy enough to stay on top of them and just kind of take them out as they go. Grabbing ammo when we can. There's actually some back here that we can use. This level does throw ammo at you. So you don't really have to worry about it. it looks like another one spawning, even though I guess because I walked forward. I don't know, man. Anyways. Right over here, we can actually grab this terminal. It doesn't matter that you can grab it there, 3,000 credits, because we'll actually be walking around to grab that. But right here, as always, we're gonna be dealing with yet more hus as we approach the bottom of these stairs. And even more importantly, a scion is going to start approaching as well yet again. So these ones we're just going to keep over here, keep them contained, and when there is a lot of them, we'll go ahead and we, we can switch to, like right now, we can switch to a grenade launcher, which will hopefully take them out as, uh, I mean, see how many get, get absolutely wasted there. So it's, it's the grenade launcher really, really, like I highly, highly recommend taking it on this mission. It will save your butt. I'm, I'm, I, no contest. It's so good comparatively to the cane, which the cane does make the very last part of this mission bonkersly easy, but honestly, you just don't need it. You really don't. Go ahead and keep taking these out. Again, you could switch to the grenade, but we do want to just... I would rather be able to be a little uh, excessive with it later and be kind of calm with it in these moments. Like right there, really easy to deal with. We'll go ahead and deal with this Scion, switching to our shotgun as well, and hitting it with a Reeve. The Reeve, of course, does do damage over time, so while it doesn't appear super effective at first, it does do more damage. Now, the trick with these Scions is that if you have the drone out, like we had, uh, these will actually not necessarily know who to target. And then they also won't do that thing where they go on the ground and then kind of explode for a ton of energy. So keep that in mind as we proceed. Um, it looks like we're pretty good. And then we can just go this way. We have more ammo that we can pick up. Not really an area that was skippable there. You do kind of still have to do this whole area. 
So over here, we can grab a med kit for another 100 credits. This is where that terminal was that we used. There's also a ton of ammo on the ground here in case you need it. Because as we, you guessed it, proceed forward, we're going to be dealing with an abomination that's going to spawn from right over here. And more husks that are going to start spawning as well. Again, not necessarily a section where I would recommend using the grenade launcher, just because they kind of come in a in in a way that, I mean, if they if they do end up overwhelming us, we will switch to it. But as of right now, I think we'll be I think we'll be totally okay. We're gonna go ahead and spawn, uh, hit that one just to get it out of there, keeping these going. The drone actually doing a lot of work for us, surprisingly from Tally. You'd be surprised, but no, it actually ends up it actually ends up working pretty well. Go ahead and take down this abomination, which should explode, taking down a few of the husks that are around it as well. Now, if you have concussive shot and stuff like that, obviously that's going to make this mission so much easier. Shockwave from um, our beautiful Jack is going to do a ton of damage as well. We can grab this, access this terminal for another 3,500 credits. Those things are going to be that's so creepy. Um, is going to work out really, really well. It's why Grunt is so useful for this mission, so incredibly impactful. So now we are going to grab this med kit. There's more ammo here that we can grab as well. And as we go down these stairs here, we're actually going to put these guys into cover or put them over there. As we hit the bottom of these stairs here, we're going to be dealing with more enemies. So we'll start just kind of doing some damage to them. There's a Scion on the opposite way there. We're actually going to just pot shot it and hopefully take out these guys as well. That's actually a lot of them, so now would be a great time to switch to the grenade. And there is actually another power cell as well, so we'll just take those two out. And see how much damage that does. Absolutely bonkers. So we're gonna go ahead and charge this one just to get our shields back, and we'll start putting some drone damage onto this. Watch out for these. We're going to go ahead and switch back to this. This is really one of the sections where I would say use the grenade launcher because it really is just going to help out. And there's also um, worth mentioning that there is a power cell actually right behind us. So if you're out, you can grab that one too. It's worth losing the couple hundred credits or whatever that you can get by having those available to you. Scion down and all we have left is just this husk that we can finish off with a few headshots, and then we can turn around and grab this ammo, this Cerberus shotgun damage, and more power cells. So we now have 10 rounds of the grenade launcher, which is really all we need to finish up this, this mission. Proceeding up here, though, we're going to be dealing with, you guessed it, more Hus, and actually, in fact, two Scions. We can get 3,500 credits from that there. But as long as you're going nice and slow through these missions, you should be okay. But as we come down here, we're gonna see that the Scions have started their march, their endless, relentless march towards us. These Hus as well, which we do want to take down the Hus. But more importantly, we really want to see if we can take down as much damage from these Scions as possible while they're kind of over there. Just to make it a little bit easier on ourselves, the Hus here aren't going to spawn in crazy high numbers, so we should be realistically okay. The thing that you have to be careful here of is that these Scions, because there's two of them, they can theoretically one-shot you if they time their shockwaves. If both of their, if you have no shields and both of their shockwaves hit you because they're doing half, half of our health every time, if both of those end up hitting us, that will be the end of us, right? And at this point, uh, both Samara and Tally are down, uh, but that's fine. We'll still be, we we'll, should still be okay. This is the thing, though, that we need to be careful of that can bug out is if the husks are meleeing you, they can actually displace you, and that will cause you to bug out as has happened numerous times in this playthrough or of this. I've actually had to re-record. I think I mentioned it a few different times. Um, but again, because I've had record so many times, I'm actually not entirely sure how many I've done. So we'll go ahead and switch to the grenade launcher, taking out those and taking out those as well. There's more ammo up here that we can then grab. Switching back to our rifle. Oh, baby. We can take out these guys just a lot it's just a lot of enemies it's a pretty it's a pretty tough we're you know we're nearing the end of the game so they're gonna be throwing a lot at us just wait until we get to the final mission oh boy 
ton of collectors coming at us. They're back awake. That's good. We grab the... Good, good, good. So what we want to do here is we actually don't want to continue any fo any further Formally into the room. The we want to sit right up here and we'll actually be able to get these to spawn in. You saw it actually literally spawn in. It dropped down. And we can actually try to put as much damage as into this as possible without it spawning in a ton of husks as well. There's two scions actually down there. There's this one and another one that you can't actually see. But we're going to go ahead and hopefully finish off one of them before it even gets over here. And there's the second one. We'll just watch the shockwaves that will end up coming out. And there are explosives here as well that we can use against them. Now, if you're really, really fast, which I doubt you are. Uh, ooh, backing up just a little bit before those shockwaves kill us. Um, if you're really, really fast, you can actually run forward and bypass the door and these guys will despawn if you do that but trying to bypass that door with everything that's coming at you is really really difficult unfortunately not able to charge here even though i'm trying literally this is what i mean it's so buggy it's so so buggy retreat a little bit let our shields come back and we will pop that there trying to take down this scion and now that that's done, we can hopefully charge and take it down with a melee. There we go. Perfect. There is yet more power cells that we can grab there. As more husks are going to approach, these ones are actually fairly easy to take down. Not that many are going to come here. You would expect a little bit more considering that that is the final door that we need to use. Uh, but we can grab this med kit for 100 credits and we can finish that off. Now we can bypass this door. The mass effect core should be simple enough. Then the ship falls into the planet. She says that. We're, it's not going to be that easy. If you have the cane, it is that easy. But we don't. I will go ahead and show footage of using the cane in this fight. Uh, just because I have it. And you'll see what I mean. But as we approach into this room, finally, we will find what we came here for. The Reaper IFF. That is our objective. So the Cerberus team did recover it. But where are they now? Tally, we've been killing them this whole time. Anyways, we can bypass this wall safe that's sort of hidden there. That is a very easy to miss wall safe. And finally, final room. And now we need to go ahead and take down these husks. Apparently, this Geth here was helping us. Seems like they lowered the kinetic barrier so that we could destroy this. Now, the whole point of this is we need to destroy the Reaper core that's right there. We will not be able to do that while the metal is in front of it, unless you have the cane. If you have the cane, the cane will automatically destroy it, which is awesome. While we are waiting for that to open, we're going to be taking down wave after wave of husk. They are never ending. They keep coming, and we just need to stay on top of it, getting the ammo that will keep replenishing as we go. The One of the safest places that you can be is actually on the bridge. But don't forget that husks are so easily uh, easy to maneuver that you don't really have to worry about too much. You can kind of just dance around them and they'll be fine. It's only when they surround you and you can't do much else that it becomes a problem. We also still have the grenade launcher, so feel free to use that as much as you want. And the core is accessible to us now. So we're gonna go ahead, we're actually gonna pop the grenade launcher just to do some damage before it disappears. We did half damage, so hopefully if it pops again, we'll be able to finish it off. But we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that we focus abominations over Hus. Everything else is pretty easy to deal with. Both of our allies going down there, and that's totally fine. As long as we are maneuvering them and setting them up in ways that we can just take them down. But the bridge is going to be your best friend, because you can just easily get around here. And as a vanguard, we're not worried. We're not stressed. Not in this section anyways. Maybe before this a little bit, just because it's so buggy. We did grab that the credits from over there. To the left. 
And in between waves, we actually were able to have both Samara and Tally resurrect. We just want to keep an eye on the reactor core, making sure that we're switching to it as soon as it's available. And potentially being able to take it out with our grenade launcher when it does activate. Go ahead and pop this. That abomination was able to get a, an explosion off and detonated, but that's okay. Should be plenty of ammo to go around. Reaper core still not active, so we need to keep taking these out. Again, if you had the cane, literally, you can just use it at any point on the Reaper core, and this mission's over. And it's active once again, so we're going to go ahead and hopefully spam some of this in there. And, oh, unfortunately, because we were getting hit by these... Ooh, let's go ahead and pop this here. Woo! Too late to save Tally, but... I mean, this is this is what I mean, right? Again, we want to be super careful to not bug this out. That is why I was using the cane in the first place, but... In between waves, they will end up getting up, which is nice for us. Giving us also a moment to recollect ourselves. And get as much ammo as possible. This just takes a while, that's all. And the Reaper core is active for potentially the last and final time. Taking it down. Just like that, the mission will end. Shepard, the Geth. I think we should bring it. Its behavior was strange. Leave it there. You know what they are. If it gets into Normandy's computers... <laughs> said it yourself. No one's ever found one intact. That's true, but I'm not sure it's worth the risk, Shepard. There's no time to debate it, Tally. Come on. Hang on, folks. Open the port side airlock. And that's the end of the Derelict Reaper 37 million years. It's been there, and now it's gone, baby. We leveled up level 30, the level cap of Mass Effect 2. Reaper IFS successfully retrieved. Loss of Cerberus team on the Reaper vessel, unfortunate but unsurprising. We'll use team's health records for comparison against Husk encountered on Reaper for possible insight into indoctrination and Husk conversion process. We got a heavy skin weave. We got a shotgun damage. We got a sniper rifle damage upgrade. We got 50,000 credits and 2,000 platinum. You love, you love it. It's the best. It's the best. For now, we've stored it in Edie's AI core. We need better equipment to fight the Reapers. An intact Geth would be invaluable to Cerberus's cyber weapons division. We'll have to disagree on that, ma'am. I saw enough of these things I need in Prime. Space it. Cerberus has a long-standing cash bounty for an intact Geth. I assure you, the reward is significant. It is very significant. 50,000 credits and 15 Renegade points if we hand this intact geth over to Cerberus, but it helped us. I've killed hundreds of these things, but I've never had a chance to talk to one. This one tried to communicate with us. Hell, it probably saved our lives. Why? Reactivating the geth is a risk. If you do so, it should be for humanity's best interests, and not your curiosity. I still think our best interests involve an airlock. Hmm. Why is it wearing in 7 armor, by the way? I want to know why it has a piece of N7 armor strapped to its chest. Battle trophy, maybe? Would a machine care about that? No. Trophies imply emotions that AIs don't have. I doubt it's more than a convenient field repair. Well, they specifically wanted to talk to us, so we have a couple options here. We are definitely going to talk to this Geth first. I'm not deciding one way or the other until I know what we've got here. I want to start it up, interrogate it. If we activate it, there is no guarantee we can deactivate it again. Bullets can. That's not what I... Thank you, both of you, for your recommendations. 
I've made my decision. Tally's gonna freak when she hears about this. So what about this Reaper IFF? I have determined how to integrate it with our systems. However, the device is Reaper technology. It is important we test it thoroughly before attempting the Omega-4 relay. It will take some time to properly integrate it with our own systems. Are we talking hours or days? Impossible to say. The technology is complex. The crew will begin work immediately. Okay. Until then, we keep building our team. I'll let you know when the IFF is ready for shakedown. We actually know the exact timing on that Reaper IFF, and that, my friends, is two missions. <laughs> You have two missions until the Reaper IFF is integrated on board the Normandy and we go through the Omega-4 relay. Any more than that? And well, you'll see. Anyways, we have a bunch of research that we can now do that we just got from that mission, including shotgun damage, sniper rifle damage, and heavy skin weave, maxing out Shepard's health. We also leveled up to the level cap of the game, which is level 30. We have one point that we could put into things if we so choose. We'll go ahead and put it into Shockwave just so that we, well, we don't have to look at it. There we go. Done. If we check our journal, we'll see that the Reaper IFF has been acquired and the Normandy crew are working to get it installed and operational. In the meantime, recruiting and preparing the team for the attack on the Collector base continues. Very interesting. And there are some more things that we could theoretically do, apparently, which is good to know. We'll check in with Kelly to see what she has to say. We have a Geth down in the AI core. It makes me a little uneasy. I hope you don't activate him, but you would know best. Yeah, well, we'll see. All right, we also have some on-red messages. Let's go ahead and see what else. Elusive Man sent us a message. I'm pleased that you were able to recover the Reaper IFF, and I've sent Edie all the necessary protocols to get it integrated successfully into the Normandy system. With luck, this will give us ability to get through the Omega-4 relay. I've been notified about the intact Geth and your decision to keep it. If you believe that it can be trusted, then go ahead and activate it. Just make sure that Edie is adequately protected against any hacking attempts. Imagine having access to another AI. Uh-oh. It's not necessarily the decision I would have made, Shepard, but this is your call. I've already cast a wide net in your recruiting efforts. And if the Geth are willing to fight the Collectors, then we can use them on the team. I trust you to get the job done, whatever it takes. Which is different if we hand it over to Cerberus and get that 50,000 credits, he'll actually say how happy he is about the, uh, the Omega-4 relay, and he'll also say that he's extremely pleased with the intact Geth we retrieved. It's a fantastic study opportunity and will definitely help our efforts to develop technology to fight the Reapers. There are, of course, some Mass Effect 3 consequences if you choose it to give it to Cerberus. I would recommend not giving it to Cerberus. Again, we don't trust Cerberus. We don't want to help Cerberus. We get what their interests are. I don't think their interests are just in protecting us against the Reapers. It seems a little bit more involved than that. And I think before we end today's episode of Mass Effect 2, I think it's important that we go down and maybe we activate this Geth AI thing. So down in the crew quarter, we can actually head to a room that we haven't had access to yet. It's actually past the medical bay here. And in the AI core here, we will find the inactive Geth, as well as a guard. Let's go ahead and see what this is all about, my friends. Head hut. I'm turning this thing back on. Be ready. Aye, aye. I have isolated our systems and erected additional firewalls. I am prepared to resist any hacking attempt. understand me? Yes. Are you going to attack me? No. You said my name aboard the Reaper. Have we met? We know of you. 
You mean I've bought a lot of Gath? We have never met. No, you and I haven't. But I've met other Gath. We are all Gath, and we have not met you. You are Shepard, Commander, Alliance, Human, fought heretics, killed by collectors, rediscovered on the old machine. Old machine? You mean the Reaper? Reaper, a superstitious title originating with the Protheans. We call those entities the Old Machines. You seem to know an awful lot about me. Extranet data sources, insecure broadcasts, all organic data sent out is received. We watch you. You watch me or you watch organics? Yes. Which? Both. My friends, how cool is this? What do you mean, heretics? Geth build our own future. The heretics ask the old machines to give them the future. They are no longer part of us. We were studying the old machines' hardware to protect our future. Are the Reapers a threat to you too? Yes. Why would they attack other machines? We are different from them, outside their plans. What future are the Geth building? Ours. Will anyone else be affected by whatever it is you're doing? If they involve themselves, they will. The most important thing that we actually get from this Geth right there was they are outside of the Reaper's plan. The Reapers never expected this. Interesting. So you aren't allied with the Reapers? We oppose the heretics. We oppose the old machines. Shepard Commander opposes the old machines. Shepard Commander opposes the heretics. Cooperation furthers mutual goals. This Geth wants to work with us. You asking to join us? Yes. Then what should I call you? Geth. I mean you, specifically. We are all Geth. What is the individual in front of me called? There is no individual. We are Geth. There are currently 1,183 programs active within this platform. My name is Legion, for we are many. My friends, I would like to introduce you to one of my favorite characters in all of Mass Effect. This here is Legion, our newest and final squad mate to join us on this uh, crazy adventure of Mass Effect 2. That seems appropriate. Christian Bible, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verse 9. We acknowledge this is an appropriate metaphor. We are Legion, a terminal of the Gath. We will integrate into Normandy. We anticipate the exchange of data. Can you believe that a Geth has joined our squad? Shepard Commander. We want to learn a little bit more about him, and we Let's will. Get back to work. Acknowledged. In the next episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. How dope is that? That is awesome. Uh, they are officially part of our squad. Let's actually go ahead and show off some things first. Now that we have awoken Legion, if you will. Legion has now joined us, which Legion is uh, is the Geth, the pure Geth, nothing but the Geth. And does Joker have anything to say about us activating a Geth on board? got a Geth on board, not as a prisoner. Can you believe that? The commander's taken out more Geth than anybody. This one must be different. Yeah. Actually, very different. Joker, what about you, my friend? So yeah, Geth on the ship. Uh, Geth? Alright, we're all freaking insane. Yeah. Alright, that's it's it off. for now. And now you know, my friends, why we waited for Tally's loyalty mission. We are going to be doing Tally's loyalty mission. We're going to be bringing Legion, a Geth, along with us to the Migrant Fleet, which is going to be awesome. We are also going to bring, be bringing Tally to Legion's loyalty mission, where we will find out some really cool things regarding the lore of the Geth and what they have. And that is all before we head to the Omega Relay to end Mass Effect 2's main story, because then we have a bunch of stuff to do after that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I sincerely appreciate you. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Mass Effect 2. We did a lot in it. It was a big one. And I am so, so excited to show you the rest of this series. Thank you. And remember, never give up, never surrender to Reaper Indoctrination. Bye, everyone.